Hey guys and gals, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's a man sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake, Sissel's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. I perked up. Wait, before you get into it, I think the others should hear this too. Where are Owen and Philip? I thought they came downstairs with you. Oh, I locked them in the closet. Again? He shrugged. I got tired of their squabbling, and babysitting isn't my job anymore. Morris unlocked the closet door and flung it open, its occupants spilling out with indignant cries. Anyway, back to your current situation. I've been asking around, and things have been quiet so far. The two thugs reported that they collected payment from you and confirmed your death. Without a body, sloppy work. Cause of death, you became hostile during your dealings and they were forced to put you down. Herschel rubbed his bruised chest bitterly. <clears throat> That's a bit of a stretch. Oleander Lorelai and his peace-love and half the family aren't too happy about the situation. Oh, wrong voice, wrong voice, okay. Oleander Lorelai and his peace-loving half of the family aren't too happy about the situation, but were willing to brush it off since the thugs claimed you were the aggressor. Maybe I should do a southern voice. A nice southern voice for Herschel. Oh, that's bullshit. More side. Agreed. The main issue now is, what can you do about it? If you show your faces publicly, the thugs will target you to finish the job. With the full blessings of the rest of the Lorelei family, I might add. If you stay quiet for too long, those thugs will claim whatever assets you have left, which isn't much, but your cafe will be gone for good. What if we fight back? If it's just two guys, we could probably take them out by surprise somehow. Moore shook his head. Those two dead collectors still have the full blessings of the Lorelei family. If you go on the aggressive, they will have the entire family's resources at their disposal. Whether you fight back directly or call the cops, you have no hope against their power and influence. But make sure you're dead You're dead for real this time around. I frowned, frustration boil broiling in my chest. Is there really nothing we could do? Philip and Owens approached our table with thoughtful looks. It sounds like not everyone in the family is on board with the thugs' whole murderous methods. Especially my dad and his supporters. Can we use that in some way? It's true that Oleander Lorelei's half of the family has been trying to steer the Lorelei's towards a more respectable direction over the past few years, but they're not without opposition. The other half of the family wants nothing more than a return to their lethal roots. It's safe to assume their dead, your dead collectors have the latter half's support. Moore scratched his chin thoughtfully. Though, I suppose, if these dead collectors publicly humiliate themselves at some big blunder, both halves of the family would no longer want to associate with them. They would be left on their own, much easier to deal with. But we currently don't have the resources to force their hand into making rash actions. For now, we just have to sit and wait for an opportunity. Second now. We mustn't be too hasty in this kind of situation. I sighed and flopped down onto a chair with a frustrated grumble. I hate all this waiting around and doing nothing. There's got to be something we could do. My phone suddenly buzzed. I dug it out of my pocket and my eyes lit up. It's Jenny! Yo, Ghostbuster! Sorry I haven't been answering your calls. My doctor's kidnapped me and put me under house arrest again these past few days. Did I miss anything important? Relief bubbled up in my chest as I pressed the phone to my ear. It felt good to hear her voice after so long. She sounded like her usual jaunty self. I guess... I guess I worried for nothing. Oh, you have no idea. The last few days have been a mess. After a brief exchange, I caught Ginny up with all, with all the current happenings. She was not pleased. Again? Keep Sissel away from that damn lake or any body of water from now on. Or maybe strap a pool floaty on him permanently. We can't have him nearly drowning every time we look away. On the bright side, everyone is still together and kicking this time around. I smiled quietly and lowered my voice. And, uh... You're still here. I'm glad we still got you with us, Jenny. There was a brief pause, and then she snorted. Wow, didn't think you were the sappy, the sappy type, Adrian. Sissel's been really rubbing off on you, huh? Well, excuse me for being thoughtful and worried about you. I'm fine, dude. Don't go all mother hen on me. I get that enough from Gran. The stairway door is suddenly swung open. I glanced up and waved, at si and waved as Sissel entered the lounge. Sissel! Jenny's calling! Oh, teaches her? How's she doing? I smiled and put her on speakerphone. Sissel, we, we were just talking about giving you mandatory swimming lessons after this whole mess is over. Absolutely not. I'm not getting wet unless I have to. 
And how's that worked out for you so far? I doubt driving into a lake is going to be a common occurrence moving forward. Come on, Adrian, back me up on this. I don't know, I kind of like seeing you get wet. Your shirt, your shirt, see, your shirt turns see-through when it's damp. Sissel elbowed me and I nearly dropped the phone. Anyway, how's Urania been doing without us? Uh, not good? Gran is having a minor aneurysm right now because she's got four missing students that she hasn't heard from in like two days. How are you guys gonna hole up with Morris? The school's gonna report you missing to the police at this point. Um, could you tell Morris Corlys that we're really sorry? It's not like we could just show up to class again. There are people trying to kill us. Okay, but if we don't show up, the school and police are probably gonna make a scene. Do you think this will provoke the family in some way? Morris scratched his chin thoughtfully. The Lorelei's will probably need to do some PR spinning if they get connected to the crime and maybe pay off a few cops and reporters. But other than that, I don't think this will affect them much. Herschel's eyes suddenly lit up. Wait, I think I might have something. Didn't you mention that Owen fella is the mob boss's son and his old man is a soft spot for him? If you're trying to use Owen as leverage, that won't work. A good chunk of the family wants Owen dead, too. The only reason he's not six feet under is because of his father's protection, and that protection is reliant on him not getting involved in family affairs. The moment Owen steps forward, the thugs will just inform them that Owen tried to interfere with their dealings, which gives them full rights to deal with him however they please. Herschel's eyes gleamed. Yeah, it's only if the family believes him. It'll be their word against ours. Oh, and how will you get the word out? Hello, this is the debtor who's supposed to be dead. Here's our side of the story. Which, uh, wouldn't help us anyway. I really did try to haggle your freedom with those thugs. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, don't you worry about that. <clears throat> ah, Southern. Really Southern. Okay. Oh, don't worry about that. I think I've got a solid idea. As a way, we can put those two thugs in hot water where neither side of the mob family want to touch him without a, with a ten-foot pole. Afterwards, they'll just be two guys with guns. Still scary, but they'll be much easier to deal with. Herschel paused, frowning as his thoughts slowly caught up with him. His ears drooped. On oh, second thought, I think uh, I think I've got what I've got is a real stupid idea. It'll, ha it'll have you kids involved, and I don't want to put y'all in more danger than you're already in. Sissel stood up with a determined glare. If you've got a plan to give those fuckers what they deserve, then you can count me in. I've been itching to pay them back for what they did to you and my mother. There's no way you're keeping me out of this. But, I mean, we're already in hiding from those guys. I'd rather meet them on my own terms instead of waiting for them to come find us. I've always wanted to be, be more of a family nuisance. I'm happy to go along with whatever you got planned. Hey, count me in too. I've missed out on a, I've missed out on too much these past few days. You're not leaving me out of this one. There was a pause, and then we all turned towards Philip, expectantly waiting for him to chime in. He bristled indignantly. What? I thought I established that I don't do encouraging speeches. <laughs> Riveting. Inspiring. He has such a way with words, doesn't he? I'm glad Philip is here to keep our spirits up. I hate all of you. Fine, don't get ki don't get killed without me. He'll be dreadfully boring around here. Sissel turned back towards Herschel, grinning widely. Well, <clears throat> well, we're not taking no for an answer. What will you have us do? Herschel hesitated before slowly smiling back. I guess I did promise to stop running away, didn't I? Alright, let's settle this debt, once and for all. The shrewd thug's eyes were trained on his phone as he and his brother strolled down the street. Despite last night's little fiasco, things seemed to be proceeding smoothly. We've deposited the debt money from Herschel McDermott to the family. It's not the entire sum of his debt, but I never expected him to fully pay off everything. The man's currently rotting at the bottom of the lake, so that's all we're getting out of him anyway. An amused smirk spread across the thug's face. We've also secured a hefty amount of bribe money off of Owen Lorelei. Money that we can keep for ourselves. The family doesn't need to know. For now, I've stashed it away in a safe house not far from here. We can figure out how to safely launder it. We can figure out how to launder it safely in due time. The burly thug scratched his head as he nervously followed behind his brother. Uh, Harry, that's great and all, but don't you think the boss is going to get pissed at us for shooting at his kid? The shrewd thug frowned, frowned and waved his hand dismissively. 
Oh, and Lorelai broke the family's little treaty by contacting us and offering bribe money. He directly interfered with family business. Even if Oleander wanted to punish him, us, he has no leverage. I mean, I know those are the rules and we're technically safe, but that's his kid right there. What if he tries to teach us a lesson anyway? Harry rolled his eyes. Then he'll have to deal with the other half of the family. Oleander may be our leader, but he's soft. Weak. His brother has been trying to get rid of him for years and is itching for an excuse to do so. So long as we have their support, we have nothing to worry about. If you say so. The burly thug didn't sound convinced. Harry scoffed and turned to glare at his brother. You're overthinking this, Marv. Owen Lorelai wasn't even hurt last night. The last we saw of him, he was driving off on that disgusting orange motorcycle. Oleander has nothing to pin on us. I don't know, man. This whole thing seems off. It's fine. Now, will you please stop nagging? They're interrupted by the sharp wail of Harry's phone. Marv glanced over his brother's shoulder as he frantically scrolled through his messages. Huh, did something happen? It's one of our contacts. Apparently something big just happened. Do you see what... Do you see what's on the news right now? They quickly flipped onto a local live news live stream. After a few moments, they're both their jaws dropped in a mix of shock and incredulous horror. da 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 Breaking news! Just this morning, a concerning incident has come to the authorities' attention. Why are they using his shirtless pick? Four students have been reported missing from Gerani Academy with possible ties to the disappearance of a local baker. All five of these individuals have not been seen or heard from for the last 48 hours. We'd like to extend an apology to the viewers at home. We cannot find a single photo of one of the students, Owen Lorelai, where he is fully clothed. A teacher at the Gerani Academy has this to say on the situation. Please, you have to find my kids! Please, you have to find my kids. They're very good boys and would never just skip class like this. At least not Philip. Something terrible probably happened. Please, you have to find my kids. I'm freaking the fuck out! The studio was cut off. The audio was cut off while the news reporter cleared her throat loudly. Oh, female, okay. The truck of the missing baker, Herschel McDermott, was found this morning submerged in Bradley Lake. The chassis was riddled with bullet holes and signs of a struggle were found along the road leading to the lake. Eyewitness reports say that two tall men were seen harassing and threatening these individuals before their disappearance, allegedly extorting them for money. Coming to you live is the witness who last saw the victims. Ah! The screen immediately cut to a shot of Ginny wailing melodramatically into an interview mic like a banshee. Oh, it was awful! That morning, these two guys came in and wrecked my favorite cafe. They were demanding some sort of debt money from the baker, and they were getting really violent. I saw them beat up poor Mr. Herschel and give him a black eye. The interviewer gasped and patted Ginny on the shoulder sympathetically. Ginny reasonably responded by crying even harder into the camera. I'm truly sorry for what you're going through, young lady. Tell us, how did your friends get involved in this situation? Ginny snipped and grabbed a tissue, dabbing at her teary eyes with a delicate theatrical flourish. Well, my friends and I were at the cafe at the time, and, and those two thugs noticed us. They found out that the baker was friends with my buddy Owen, who's got more money than brain cells, so they started threatening him too. Cough up the money or you're never seeing your friends again and all that. I was so scared. They had guns and everything. I'm pretty sure my friend Philip pissed himself, pissed himself with fright. That is certainly a harrowing experience for kids your age to go through. What happened afterwards? How did you escape? So I'm going to pause it right there, y'all. Yep, I'll pause it right there. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, com like comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for submitting to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye